Mealy Mud by Weeb Knots. Mealy Mud, wet, sticky regolith, where the main liquid is blood. It had been decades of fighting. Many of the original intake were dead, crippled, or retired. Then came the true tales of horror. The many propaganda machines pumped out their half-truths and explanations. The humans are well known to deploy psychological warfare, they said. And of course, we believe them. Why wouldn't we? Underestimating our foes had been the doctrine for the high races since their inception. But now we face something new. Their lack of tech overridden by sheer spite. My father came back a broken man, and he would refuse to tell me what he had done out there. I remember him saying, Stay away from that war. A mantra repeated until I ignored it. We didn't know the term mealy mud when we first went into battle. No human had told it to us, for we left none that could. It was only when they took us prisoners did we learn this term. A fitting term at that. It was a particularly resistive blockhouse in a city of another human system. They, as with every other star system faced with merciless slaughter, decided to fight to the last. This wasn't my first mission, and so I knew to keep my head down, eyes active, and looking sharp for traps. These bloody apes had a knack for hiding all sorts of nasty surprises for those unfortunate enough to not pay attention. But cheap and cheerful were foot spikes. Those would be littered everywhere. We were returning towards friendly ground after an extended patrol. An explosion rattled my mandibles, and I braced for a sharp point and a painful death. None came, and I shook to attention at the cries of my comrades, blown limbs by a hidden landmine, one dead, two injured. We dragged them to a ruined house. Echoes from its old occupants could be seen on the blowout walls and shattered pictures. Rotted remains suggested their fate. We charged past, and our medic instructed us to place the casualties on the large table. Stand guard, the commissar instructed to my section. I found a small area with a good view. I stood there for what felt like hours. The thundering guns not so far away. The staccato of chain guns tore through that still night. I felt the wind of that alien world on my antennae, and the gurgle of some unseen stream. I could have sat there for hours, admiring the vast destruction and death. I heard the sound of rock shifting. Normally, not a cause for worry. However, this sounded heavy. Too heavy. I lifted my rifle. All at once, the silence was broken by the chaos of combat. A round struck one of my outer eyes, and I fell to the ground. I woke up a few hours later, every limb bound. To wake up at all was a miracle all on itself. However, to wake up and see a human's small eyes examining my eye injury was even more surprising. He tutted, and said some gibberish to another human that I could not see. I was curious. Why had they spared me? Note, at this point, they didn't realize what we did to prisoners. One bared its teeth at me and spoke. You're one lucky son of a bitch. I had no clue how they could speak my language. Thought you were a dead one, though I wasn't sure what they wanted, so I asked and they responded with a statement that made me feel sick to the core. You couldn't fight. You were bleeding, and it ain't right to leave you in to die. I thought to ask why they would extend such a courtesy where we would not, but I realized it would be unwise to inform them of what we do to those who surrender. So, I extended my thanks and asked what happened to my company. Dead to the last, the thought of surrender never crossing their minds. Where am I? I asked. A field hospital, he responded. I stayed at that place for many days. Many spat or leered at me, but surprisingly, none ever attacked me. Then came the day of the assault. The humans were running to and fro. Men came back caked in mud and blood. Bolts screeched overhead. I saw the medic who treated me pulling a boy onto a stretcher. I heard him yell above the chaos. Get him onto the beds and make sure to wash the mealy mud off of him. I remember immediately, understanding to what he was referring to, and I worried. For if there were a mealy, there was sure to be a rout of HRM, the high race marines, and the humans would find out what happened to their citizens. I sat away from the chaos and hoped no one would kill me in the confusion. Then I saw it, for the first time, humans routing. 
A surge of panic crashed through as men fled for their lives, and medics tried desperately to gather a rear guard to get the wounded out. I saw the man who saved my life get shot. Raw terror passed through me. What would happen if I were taken back? Would I be labeled a traitor? These questions rattled around my carapace as a line of HRMs tore through the camp, killing anything that wasn't part of the high races. I stood in horror as I realized that we were scum compared to those apes. I sat in disgust as they swept past me and continued on their slaughter, though their advance was halted by a successful counter charge. It was after a series of interrogations that I was let go. I told them about this term, and according to my friend, it spread like the plague. To the point, it seems, to be the definition for that hellish soup.